Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yeung. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Oriana's employer behind bars awaiting sentencing after being found guilty of abusing Indonesian maid. West Kowloon Arts Hub chief steps down early, claiming health reasons just like his predecessor. And Siwa Leng condemns anti-mainland protesters but offers no solution for overcrowding in Chun Mun. Indonesian domestic helper Ariana's former employer has been found guilty of a catalogue of abuses against her in a case that brought international attention to the plight of maids in Hong Kong. Mother of two, Law Wan Tung, is behind bars awaiting sentencing later this month and could face a maximum jail term of seven years. Oriana Solistianing Si was mobbed by the media and her supporters when she arrived at the district court in Wan Chai this morning to hear the fate of the woman who mistreated, abused and intimidated her for seven months. The Indonesian domestic helper's former employer, 44-year-old mother of two, Lo Wan Tong, hid behind her lawyer as she made her way into court. The former beautician cried in the dock as the judge ordered her to be remanded in custody after finding her guilty of 18 of the 20 charges against her. Oriana became a global symbol of abuse domestic helpers in January last year when she left Hong Kong bruised and battered. Images of the critically injured and traumatized young woman were circulated around the world, causing shock and outrage. During the 16-day trial that began last December, the court heard about a catalogue of abuse, beatings and threats. Law had denied all the assault charges laid against her, only admitting to one count of failing to buy insurance for her employee. Outside the court, Oriana and her supporters were jubilant. I'm very happy. I won the case. Why are you happy? Why? Why are you happy? Yeah, because I will get the justice from uh, Hong Kong. Judge Amanda Woodcock relied solely on Ariana's testimony, which she found to be credible to give her justice. She described the abused woman as a simple young lady trying to financially better her life and that of her family. Judge Woodcock rejected defence claims that Oriana wanted to frame her former employer and had a hidden financial agenda or personal vendetta against law. She suggested that the more law abused Oriana, the more intimidated and subservient she became, encouraging her employer to continue mistreating her. Judge Woodcock found Law guilty of causing grievous bodily harm with intent when she stuck the tube of a vacuum cleaner into Ariana's mouth and twisted it, causing lacerations to her lips. The former beautician punched the helper so hard on one occasion that she was knocked unconscious. On another occasion, Law stripped Ariana naked, splashed cold water on her and forced her to stand in front of a fan for hours during winter. The court also found Law guilty of criminal intimidation for threatening to kill Oriana and her family if she told anyone about the abuse. Judge Woodcock said the fact that Oriana believed her employer showed how simple and timid she was. Even though Oriana suffered from severe dermatitis, Law did not take her to see a doctor for fear of being exposed, Woodcock said. Law was also convicted of assaulting and threatening another maid, Tutik Lestari Ningsi, between April 2010 and March 2011. But she was acquitted of assaulting and intimidating a third Indonesian helper. Law was also ordered to pay Oriana around $28,800 in wages owed. She's now behind bars and will be sentenced on the 27th of February, pending psychiatric reports and character references. Woodcock warned her that because of the serious nature of the case, a jail term is inevitable. Oriana said today she has forgiven her employer, but Law Wan Tung got what she deserved for abusing her. The Indonesian maid and her supporters are urging the government to change existing rules to ensure it doesn't happen again. ATV's Winner Wong reports. When Ariana met the media this afternoon, she was forgiving but firm towards the woman who abused and traumatized her for months. As human being, I could forgive her and her family. But since Hong Kong has a justice system, justice must be upheld. Ariana then addressed employers of others like her. I hope they will start treating migrant workers as work as workers and human beings and stop treating us like slaves because as human beings we all have uh, equal rights.
The Indonesian maid supporters blamed the government squarely for the plight of foreign domestic helpers like her. Ariana is the face and the voice of foreign domestic workers who, like her, are also victims of Hong Kong government's unjust policies. It's about time that the Hong Kong government makes true its promises to sincerely address the issues exposed in the Ariana case. Migrant workers groups are demanding the scrapping of the two-week rule, which gives foreign domestic helpers only 14 days to find new employers if they are sacked or resign. Advocates say the limited time makes it difficult for cash-strapped abused workers to take their employers to court because legal procedures can drag on for months. Concerned groups also want the government to get rid of the live-in rule for maids. Apart from being at the beck and call of their employers around the clock, the rule also forces them to accept living arrangements provided by their bosses no matter how bad. Police urge domestic helpers to report abuse, assuring them of protection. And even if there are cultural differences or the domestic helpers feel afraid to come forward to the authorities in Hong Kong, they should be, feel safe and confident that their case will be treated properly. Labor Minister Matthew Chung welcomed the verdict, saying the government is committed to protecting workers' rights. Winna Wong, ATV News. The Australian executive who runs the West Kowloon Arts Hub has announced that he's stepping down early for health and personal reasons after extending his contract last July. Michael Lynch is the second official to quit the post early, but the government has dismissed concerns that it's having trouble finding someone to stay. The West Kowloon Arts Hub is going to be rudderless again. Michael Lynch, who oversees the multi-billion dollar project, will step down as Chief Executive Officer of the West Kowloon Cultural District Authority on the 3rd of August. He's citing health and personal reasons for the early exit. There are a lot of questions about why would you employ a man to do West Kowloon who uses a stick at that point that um, I was uh, pretty confident I had a new hip and I was um, you know, intent on being able to make it work, that I could sing and dance as well as anyone in Hong Kong. The 64-year-old Australian, who has been in the post since 2011, extended his contract for two years last July, but he now wants to return home to look after his seriously ill wife. He does not feel it's been a waste of time and money for everyone the venues in the park makes me feel um, very confident that with the team of people that we've now got working for us, um, all of the staff and, and the board, um, that you know, it's, it's a good time for me to give notice of my intention to go. Um, I still you know, recognise it's a huge project. It was always going to take a lot longer period of time than I was able to give to it. And you know, that was um, you know, part of my thinking. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam, who chairs the authority, will lead a global search for a replacement. She dismissed concerns about problems holding on to qualified people for the job, amid speculation about government interference and public pressure. Lynch's predecessor, Graham Sheffield, quit after just five months in 2011, citing health reasons. He went on to take over as Arts Director of the British Council two months later, leaving the Hong Kong government red-faced. Chief Executive Leung Cheng Ying has condemned protesters who turned violent during a rally against mainline parallel traders and shoppers in Tumun over the weekend. He insisted his government is tackling the problems that triggered the protest, but did not offer any solution in terms of controlling the influx of cross-border visitors. Before his weekly cabinet meeting this morning, Leung Cheng Ying spoke publicly for the first time about the flare-up in tensions between local residents and mainland visitors in Tunmun. Hundreds of angry residents took to the streets of the border district on Sunday, complaining that the influx of mainland shoppers has made life unbearable for them. Police used pepper spray and batons to break up angry mobs who stormed into shopping malls to vent their frustrations. Leung today condemned the violence, saying it's unacceptable for a small number of people to express their grievances by disrupting public order. The government will act strictly according to the law in dealing with such illegal behaviour, he promised. As for the problem of parallel traders, which was what triggered Sunday's protest, he insisted that various departments have already been taking action against them. To those who are complaining that he's not doing enough, the chief executive pointed out that he had successfully asked Beijing to shelve a plan 
that would have allowed 4 million non-permanent Shenzhen residents to come here on multiple entry permits. But he did not offer to do anything about visitor numbers. In a rare move, Shenzhen Party Secretary Wang Rong also stated his views on the issue today. Answering reporters' questions in Guangzhou, Wang pointed out the severe problem of food safety on the mainland has led to many flocking across the border to stock up on basic supplies. But he is hopeful that the situation will improve as the central government strengthens food safety regulations to restore public confidence. Despite concerns about mainlanders causing a shortage of baby milk powder here, the Consumer Council has found that the situation has actually improved. Customs officers say they're doing their part, having seized 89 tons of infant formula since limits were imposed in 2013. ATV's Alison Chan reports. Addressing public concerns about rampant parallel trading, the Customs and Excise Departments promised today to intensify its crackdown on such illegal activities during the Chinese New Year. We will assist particularly the Immigration Department through our plainclothes investigators doing surveillance in different districts um, to pinpoint areas where we suspect there are storages, distributors, and area. Since a two-can limit was imposed on cross-border travelers in March 2013, customs officers have handled 9,160 cases of illegal smuggling involving a total of 89 tons of baby milk powder. The customs chief called for tougher penalties to discourage the illegal trade. But despite concerns that mainlanders are buying up supplies at the expense of locals, the Consumer Council reported today that the shortage of infant formula has actually eased. Maybe because of the complaints, because the society is um, putting a lot of focus on this issue. So the supplier, they really um, uh, try to pile up more, more products for sales. Surprisingly, the retail price of a tin of milk powder fell from an average of $380 last year to a maximum of 295 this year. According to a survey conducted by the watchdog, the most obvious improvement was in Shenzhui, where 9 out of 10 shops ran out of supplies last year. The watchdog identified Po Lam as the worst hit area this year, where 2 out of 10 shops have no milk powder. Alison Chan, ATV News. The head of Taiwan's cabinet-level agency in charge of mainland policy has stepped down over a scandal involving his deputy. Wang Yuqi had fired his number two over allegations that he had leaked secrets to Beijing, but prosecutors could not find enough evidence. ATV's Joyce Wu reports. It's the fallout from a scandal that gripped Taiwan for months. Wang Yuqi, head of the Mainland Affairs Council, stepped down today to take responsibility for forcing his former deputy Chang Xianyao to resign last year on suspicion that he had leaked secrets to Beijing. But prosecutors said there wasn't enough evidence against Chang. At a press conference that was televised live today, Wang apologized for causing turmoil. But he said he disagreed with the prosecutors and felt very disappointed and powerless over the outcome, although he respected their decision. Relations across the Taiwan Strait have improved drastically in recent years, and political analysts say Wang's departure is not expected to have much impact on relations between the two sides. Joyce Wu, ATV News. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim has vowed to continue fighting for freedom and justice as Malaysia's top court upheld his conviction for sodomy. Police in the Malaysian capital Kuala Lumpur pushed aside his supporters as he was driven away, presumably to serve a five-year term. Anwar has said the charge was politically motivated. In court, he told the judges that they had become partners in crime in the murder of judicial independence. Anwar stands to lose his parliamentary seat and the chance to contest the next general election. U.S. President Barack Obama has not ruled out arming Ukraine in its conflict with pro-Russian rebels. But he is postponing a decision until a crucial meeting in Minsk tomorrow. Here's George Wu. Pro-Russian separatists have stepped up their offensive in Volorysk near Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. Fighting also intensified around the strategic railway hub of Devilsev in the same area. 
The rebels say they have cut off a key supply road to the town, but the claim has been denied by Ukraine's pro-Western government. Away from the fighting, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has continued a shuttle aimed at ending the crisis on her doorstep. Her latest stop was Washington for talks with President Barack Obama. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on Russia, accusing President Vladimir Putin of sending troops and weapons to eastern Ukraine. Moscow has denied the allegations. Obama said he hopes the problem can be resolved through diplomacy, but did not rule out raising the stakes, alleging that Russia had violated a peace deal made last year. The possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. But I have not made a decision about that yet. Merkel opposes sending U.S. arms to Ukraine and is banking on four-way talks in Minsk tomorrow for a resolution. She will join French President François Hollande and Ukrainian leader Petro Poroshenko for talks with Putin. They will try to breathe new life into the peace agreement and end a conflict that has killed more than 5,000 people in the past year and threatened fresh hostilities between East and West.